If you're looking for an investment property or a home, then in almost every situation, you're also going to be looking for a mortgage so that you can afford to purchase that property. Today, I sit down with Don from Mortgage Choice on the Gold Coast, and we talk about whether or not you should use a mortgage broker when you're going ahead and looking for a mortgage for your property. We talk about why you would use a mortgage broker and what the advantages are over just going to your bank or just going to a lender yourself. Hey, this is Ryan from PositiveCashflowAustralia.com.au, and today I'm sitting here with Don from Mortgage Choice, and Today we're just going to talk about mortgages and mortgage brokers and why we would use their services and how we can go about getting in contact with them and when in the buying cycle we want to engage a mortgage broker. So thank you for coming or letting me come to your offices today to ask you some questions. No worries at all. Uh, so firstly I want to just get a better understanding for our audience of going back to basics, what exactly is a mortgage broker and what do they do? Thanks Brian. Um, the mortgage industry changed a lot a few years ago when a lot of people realized that banks aren't always going to say yes. So mortgage brokers were invented to give people choice and uh, because some one bank might say no to the client. So the beauty of a mortgage broker is that it's a free service to most mortgage brokers. Um, some do charge um, and it uh, depends on the panel of lenders that a mortgage broker has. It's like going to 12 different banks all at the one time. So you go to a mortgage broker to give them your story and then they go to go hunting for you to try and find out how many banks can help the client because they've all got different rules, all those banks, and different rates and products and fees, and not every bank can help every client. So the beauty of a mortgage broker is they're working for you, but it doesn't cost you anything, and they have to come up with a solution that keeps the client happy to make the client want to go ahead. So that's, you have an independent uh, mortgage broker who is really in there for the client's best interest to try and find out what's the right solution for that client. So should, I guess, do mortgage brokers appeal to all purchasers and all investors or does it just appeal to some, like you mentioned, the people with irregularities in their job employment or? No, it's a good question. Um, I really think, and I'm probably a bit biased, I think every (laughs) client should go to a mortgage broker instead of going to a bank because you don't know if you're getting the right deal. If you, someone goes to that bank, you might think you're getting the right deal. Lots of customers go to a bank and they might get a no. So the customer thinks, well, that's it. I cannot go ahead and into that transaction, that purchase. They're not realizing that there's plenty of other banks that might be happy to. So if people don't go to a mortgage broker, they're only going to one possible source and that possible source might approve the loan, but is it the right loan? It's the type of loan, it's the fees and the rates and so, yeah, I'm biased. You've got to go to a mortgage broker. And I guess you would also have the visibility to look at different interest rates, different uh, fees, all of that sort of stuff. What, what else should people be aware of? So what we do is primarily we want to find out for that client how many lenders can help them. So we need to find out all this information. As so is that like a narrowing down process because yeah. someone is, just might not help them at all? Absolutely. So we don't even need to think about that. Yeah, absolutely. So when we, we, first of all, we meet clients, we get on with them, and then we find out what they're wanting, then we go and gather all their info. And it's usually just questions and answers and us writing it all down. Then we have to go and do our homework, and that homework um, involves eliminating and finding out how many can help. So there's usually some sort of peculiarity with nearly every client. It's either the type of property they want to buy, it's their income, or it's their time in their job, or they've had a session of working overseas, or there's so many unusual circumstances. So we've got to find out those things. And then we've got to find out, out of our 27 lenders, there might be 12 or six that can help the client. Then it's a matter of talking about the type of loan product that suits the client and their cash flow and the type of thing they're doing. Yeah. So for an investor, a lot of the time it's interest only, it's how you derive or channel the flow of money towards an offset account. Um, to have rent and all available income going into the offset, having direct debits to the interest only loan. Um, So then once we talk about the type of loan product that suits the client, then it's a matter of comparing between those, say, five or six banks and its rates and fees. And a lot of people get caught on the fees 
and they don't realise that a 0.1% difference in a rate can usually mean a lot more than a fee. Depends on how much they borrow. Yeah. So there's actually a lot more to think about than just the interest rate, yeah. because you've got to think about fees as well, but what a lot of people don't know is that you actually have to think about how you're going to structure your loan, and as you were just saying, how you're actually funneling money into that loan and out of that loan using offsets accounts and so forth. So it does, as you say, like start to get very complicated. And for new investors or for people who are regularly investing, um, we can't expect to know all of those things. No. Going years, into ago, it. years ago, it was sort of normal that when someone bought a rental property or an investment property, that you would open a separate bank account and you put the rent in there and you'd have the payment of the loan come out of there. And it's, it's now sort of coming around to being more acceptable that you don't need to do that. Um, you can drive all the income into an offset account and have the offset account linked to the non-tax deductible home loan. So when someone has a home loan and an investment loan, they're two very different types of borrowings. One is tax deductible, the investment loan, and the home loan is not. So I always suggest to people who have both is to try and get all income going towards the non-deductible home loan because we want to pay that off sooner. Yeah. And the system in Australia allows for a 100% tax deduction on this investment loan. So then I always try and suggest that we have this investment loan um, not be paid off early, leave it as an interest only loan and channel all money over here. You've still got to pay the interest each month, but at least get the rent over into the home loan, have it come down sooner and all within the customer's comfort level and their lifestyle. Yeah. So that's. That's probably a conversation for another video or something okay. like that, but that's a very, that's a great idea that people can take away from this is that when you're looking at owning a home and you're looking at owning an investment property, there's ways that you can actually funnel funds to make your loan repayments on your home lower so you can maximize your tax deductions on your investment property. And that gets, again, more technical and so it is advised that you do go and see a professional like Don, a mortgage broker who knows the industry, has the licenses, that they need to do that and everything like that. So property investment, you need a team. You need a solicitor for conveyancing, you need an accountant for uh, if you need advice on structuring. Uh, there's depreciation reports. So there's lots of things that a good, successful property investor needs and one is a good mortgage broker. Yeah, and we were talking just before the interview started about some people who have been stung in the property market and one of the issues that many people have is that they don't have a team around them but people who have been in the industry for quite some time, like Don, you've been in the industry for about 30 years or more, people who have been in the industry for some time and know where people make the mistakes and how you can avoid those sorts of traps. And so getting a good mortgage broker is definitely one of those experts and one of those people that you should have on your team. So thank you, Don, we'll close it up there. So no thank you so much for your time and your expertise today. Pleasure. And I guess, is there any last words of advice that you would give to any new investors who are trying to work out how much they need to borrow or they're looking at their first home? Well, first of all is find out how much you can borrow and uh, a good mortgage broker will find that out. And then second of all is then do your homework with where you want to buy your first investment property. And there's some really good publications, there's some really good online tools um, and do your homework. It's, you don't have to rush in and it's a bit of a balance because there's lots of people who maybe rush in and get emotionally involved and there's other, the other end of the spectrum is people who take years of analysing and don't ever take the step. So if you find out how much you can borrow, do some research, team up with some people that you feel comfortable with and you, you know that your interests are in their best you know, uh, advice, then make your first step. Yeah. and get it set up right, understand how it's set up, and then two years later, do it again. Yeah, so rinse and repeat once you know exactly yes. what you're doing. This last thing that I would ask you, um, do you have a favorite property investment book that you've read that you could recommend? Um, API. The Property Investment Magazine? Australian Property Investor, I've subscribed to for over 10 years. It, it's the Bible for property investment for residential in Australia, and it has great articles from first-time investors all the way through to sophisticated investors. It has, at the very back of, it has every suburb in Australia. 
Yeah, I love the stats in the back. There's no one really looks at them, but it has so much great data. Yeah. So you can check out API. Just go to apimagazine.com.au, and that's their web page. You can sign up for subscriptions there, or they do have a bunch of free content on their site as well. All right, thank you very much, Don. No worries at all. Pleasure. If you want to get in contact with Don, super easy. Just go to my short link, which is pca.im forward slash Don. That's D-O-N. And that will redirect you to his site with his contact details on there. Now, mortgage brokers can deal with people all over the country. You don't have to be on the Gold Coast to get in contact with Don. So just go to pca.im forward slash Don. Check him out. Give him a call. He'll be able to help you work out what your borrowing capacity is and work out what the best loan is for your needs.